Hey friends, welcome to Faithful Life Podcast. I'm Matt Jacobson at faithfulman.com. And I'm Lisa of club31women.com. We've been married for 27 years. We have eight fantastic kids. And today we have a deeper, richer love than when we were married. Yeah, it can happen. And it can happen for you too. So join us each week as we explore what it means to be a biblical Christian in our marriage, parenting, church, and culture. It's about growing, maturing, and being equipped for the faithful life God is calling you to. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. Listen, we hope you're doing all right these days. Kind of challenging times, aren't they? They really are. Hello, friends. We are glad to be with you, even if it's just over the air. Absolutely. And you know what? Crazy, and I won't say unprecedented, because you know there certainly have been times in history when things have been upside down and backwards. But you know, one of the things that I'm mindful of at this time, and certainly we are at our local assembly, our church, is that the Bible does call us as believers to pray for those who have rule over us, who have authority over us. And Mm -hmm. I hope you're all remembering to pray for President Trump and the team that is trying to deal with all of this. And of course, there are a thousand iterations of opinions about this, that, and the other thing. But the Bible doesn't seem to enter into all that. It just says, pray for those that have rule over you. And you know what? I just want to take a moment on this podcast. Would you guys just join us in praying for our president and the people that are leading this country? Father God, we bow before you in the name of Jesus, Lord, and we lift up the president before you. We pray, O God, that he would fear you, first and foremost. We pray, Father, that he would acknowledge you as God, and we pray, Father, that he would indeed fear you. Lord, we thank you that you've surrounded him with a lot of people who uh, name your name, who love you. And we pray, Father, that uh, in these times that just the nation would cry out to you, would seek you, Father, would come to you, just like the children of Israel did so many times when things began to go sideways because of their disobedience. We know, Lord, that this world is full of sin and full of the consequences of sin. But in the midst of all of that, you've called your people to pray for those that have rule over you. And so that's what we're doing right now. And we do pray, Father, that uh, they would have uh, true fear of you and wisdom to know right moves and next steps. And we pray for the Congress. God, what a dysfunctional, um, challenging circumstance that is every time we dip in and look at what's going on. But Lord, we know that you are sovereign, that you are overall, not that you make everything happen, Lord, but that you will move your purposes forward regardless of how men exercise their own wills against you. And we're grateful for that. We're grateful for how the story ends. We love you. And we uh, just put our trust in you in these times. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, certainly the lay of the land is different than it has been in the past. But as I mentioned, it's not unprecedented, certainly, in in history. Um, There have been times in history when crazy things have happened and have turned the world upside down. But this has really brought it right to home, hasn't it, uh, in, uh, in American families and homes? And, and of course, Trump has just announced the new social distancing guideline to be extended through April 30th, something that may be ready for. And uh, I don't know, uh, not that anybody thought this was going to be over in a heartbeat, but certainly there's something about putting it out another month that has an impact. Isn't that right, babe? Oh, yeah. I've talked to so many of my friends who have said that, and I have also felt this way, like it was almost like it's unreal. You you feel like we live in this modern era, so we shouldn't, yeah. can't, isn't there something we can do exactly. about this? I think that was at least one part of it. Uh, it seems so unexpected and mm. something we should be able to get a grip on. And And finding yourself in a place where you don't have any control over it and you are, I don't know, I feel almost helpless. So the first announcement was disappointing, but this this uh, last Sunday night's just extension. Um, yeah, was just it wasn't shocking to me, but I I have to say that it I I, I was disappointed and almost discouraged initially. Well, I think least. there was something in all of us that just wanted it to be over with. Yeah, let's get back to normal, right? You know, expectations are powerful, aren't they? And we kind of built we kind of have a built-in expectation that hey, tough stuff is going to come, it's going to go, and. As Americans, I think we kind of expect it to go sooner than later. Yeah, I think that is definitely part of our culture, part of the kind of the message out there that, you know, hey, you just got to set your goals. You just got to go for it. And then all of a sudden you find your place like, oh, I, there's, I don't get to set my goals. I don't get to just go for it. 
I am now having to deal with what's before me. Right. And it's not what I would have planned or, you know, or anticipated. Well, absolutely. And now the way this has all impacted us, uh, there's certain aspects of our lifestyle that already were more home centric. I mean, we have offices in our house. We work out of our house. The podcast studio is right adjacent to our house. Um, we have a home church. In fact, we're not even meeting at the home church. Last week we met as, or not last week, but the week before, Sunday before, we met as couples. So mm-hmm. we, we are families, two families in a home. But then they even made the restrictions uh, more restrictive. And so we didn't even meet as a home fellowship. But but imagine those people that maybe both the husband and the wife work and the kids are in a school. In fact, we have friends whose kids are, five, what, five kids mm-hmm. are in public school. They both work, and now they're all home, and things are not as they were. Hey, friend, have you been struggling with pornography? Have you been dipping in where God wouldn't want you to dip in? Have you been clicking on things God would never want you to click on? Are you feeling weak? Are you feeling defeated? Well, I've got some good news for you. God has a plan for you to walk in complete and total victory in this matter of purity, saying no to sexual sin, saying no to pornography, and never looking back. I'm going to invite every one of you, or maybe a friend that you have and you want to mention it to him, I want to invite him too. I want to invite you to the Freedom Course. We're getting started on a new class. The March class has been awesome. The April class is about to begin. It begins April 2nd at 6 p.m. I'm teaching five live classes. So I'm interacting with you as the students were talking back and forth. It's live, it's interactive, super powerful. I'm teaching those classes. We're also recording. We've got some friends in Australia who can't make the live class. So I record it and they can uh, go ahead and click on that. So it doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter what time zone you're in. You're invited to the Freedom Course. Go to faithfulman.com forward slash freedom. So come and learn to walk as a faithful man. Learn to walk in the victory Christ won for you at the cross. Go to faithfulman.com forward slash freedom. We'll see you there. And remember, the sign up is gonna close. The enrollment is open until 4 p.m. on Thursday. That's just a few days from now. So sign up right away. See you then. Yes, even though it's not dramatically affected our day-to-day uh, routines because we do homeschool and we work from home, even still it has had an impact on certainly us and our decisions and where we find ourselves. But many of our friends who are in a place where it's dramatically different, they're, can you imagine just suddenly homeschooling? That that That's a huge task, especially if you're not prepared for it and it's unexpected and, and then just... Uh, either husband or wife who are at home because they're not at work. So we know that lots of you listening are living a life that is just way different than it was a couple of weeks ago with Mm -hmm. all of these changes. And schedules are in an upheaval. You're literally thrown together in this concentrated time uh, that is not part of your normal routine for hours on end in a way that is all new. And all of this kind of goes together to create certain things in the home, doesn't it? Well, in addition to just being different, it's stressful. And everyone is having their own stress, Mm -hmm. which Matt and I kind of half joke about, you know, taking turns with things like this. Like, you know, okay, it's your turn to be stressed. Now I'm going to be the one that's going to be the encourager, the the comforter, the, you know, support person. (laughs) And so it's kind of a joke, but it's kind of not because when you're both feeling stress and maybe different and experiencing it in different ways, then it makes it really hard on your marriage, your family, Absolutely. And there's a lot of fear associated with the unknown. I think that uh, many of us just look at this and go, well, you know, a couple of weeks we can knuckle under. We'll be fine. And, uh, you know, get the things we need. And this thing will pass. We'll just get on to life as normal. But the idea that, you know what, this could go on for a long, long time. Mm. It starts to sort of uh, sort of creep in almost like a like the cold on a winter's evening starts kind of creeping into the crevices of the house. The sun goes down and just gets... Uh, more and more a part of the atmosphere. Well, that's kind of what we want to talk about today. We want to we talk about what's happening in your home. 
what is actually going on based on this tremendous pressure and in some cases fear-inducing uh, view of what's going on in the world. And the thing about difficult times, the thing about challenging times, the thing about the pressure cooker, the thing about being pressed in uh, together in a way that we're not used to, you know, I think sometimes we think, hey, that's going to build character. But what it really does, it actually reveals the, the character that's there. It reveals the relationships that are there hmm. or not there. And so we want to ask you a question. What are you finding in your home in these new circumstances? What's emerging? What are you seeing? Maybe it's a positive thing, and maybe you're all just coming together in a positive way, and hey, if that's you, God bless you. Maybe you're seeing some things that show a little fraying around the edges, maybe showing a little something that perhaps wasn't apparent. And we're just asking, hey, let's take a look at that. Let's ask God, what does he want to do with the things that we're finding as we're pressed together in this unprecedented time? I remember a time a few years back when we took our whole family on this long road trip. We went down to Texas, from Oregon to Texas. I think it took us maybe three days. And we had rented this medium-sized RV to do it. So it wasn't tiny, but it wasn't huge either. And we it was were class all... C, for those of you who know these things. <laughs> yes. The cab over. It wasn't big for 10 people, just saying. And at first, it was kind of exciting. The kids were excited. It was, we were all... yeah. it was fun. And there was lots about this trip that we have fond memories. But I will also say that um, as the mother, Matt was busy, pretty much busy driving most of the time. Um, I started seeing things in our kids that I hadn't seen before. Just I saw uh, maybe just the two... godly interaction. We had no well... idea. About... <laughs> I, I'm sure there were those moments as well. But just uh, some siblings that I realized there was friction between them, and I hadn't noticed that before because we were able to keep enough distance and keep busy enough that it was actually hiding what was going on there. It was hard to do social distancing in the RV. It's <laughs> yes, very hard to do social distancing in RV. <laughs> and even just like one, uh, one of the daughters was bossy, and I just don't think I realized how bossy she actually was, but it became very apparent on that trip. Anybody and who's interested in names, you can just email me <laughs> and I'll... <laughs> I don't know if we have permission <laughs> to give names. <laughs> but... Um, but anyway, so in some ways, that was a difficult part of that trip. But it was also, I thought, okay, Lord, I'm thankful in many ways that you were revealing these things to us that we might have missed otherwise. And so there is a benefit, if you will, of having these things revealed, even if they're not pleasant things. Well, and that's what happens. You know, our busy sort of nonstop routines, sometimes those things make it easy or convenient or maybe just distracting enough mm -hmm. that we don't even focus on what is needful, what's, act, what's happening. So that's what that that's really what we see going on with this added pressure and this added time together. Uh, the Lord revealing certain things, and is He revealing things in your home? What is the culture? What is the nature? What's the tenor of your home and your communication? What's happening there uh, in in this time of concentrated being together? And I don't know if you've seen it, but there have been quite a few articles out there lately. These are just even secular articles that are talking about this kind of thing where once people have slowed down enough and or stuck in small spaces together, how conflict is, is becoming apparent and how it's even been leading to divorce. Mm -hmm. I, there was hashtag Corona divorce, which I had not heard of before. Right. But how tragic that is. But as you were saying, it's, it's no place in the life of a believer. And what we can do is we can look at these these opportunities of, okay, what are some things we need to grow in, to work on, what's being revealed, and and using it for, for sure. good rather than... Well, and if we're not careful, of course, trouble comes in in so many ways. And uh, of course, the enemy wants to use this time right. to bring distance, to bring friction, to bring, bring trouble into your marriage. And as believers, we recognize the truth of Ephesians chapter 6. What's going on it's not just a physical interaction between us, but rather spiritual wickedness in high places. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against uh, rulers, against powers, wickedness in high places. This is what's happening, the jurisdiction of the enemy all around us. This is what's taking place. And he has a use of all of these things, all of this pressure, all of this challenge. He's got a use of it. In relationships, of course, it's a very negative use. It's a destructive use. That's what he wants to do. And I think sometimes we can be maybe a little tempted or a little inclined, I'll say, to look at our circumstances and just say, hey, the circumstances is what brought this on, right? But mm -hmm. the fact is, is the circumstances are the circumstances, right? What I am doing in those circumstances isn't about the circumstances. 
it's about me. It's about who I am as a person. And so the relationship that we have, I mean, it's certainly on display when we mop up and go out, at, at, you know, out and people see us and, you know, we put our best foot forward. Yeah, that's our relationship on display. But when we're at home in this, this concentrated time of being together and pressure and just challenge even, I mean, certainly even just the financial pressure that is brought to bear on literally tens of millions of American families because of what's gone on. Mm -hmm. What happens in our relationship isn't something that's happening to us. It's something that is being revealed in us in terms of how we are acting in those circumstances, how we are interacting with our spouse and how we are communicating and how we are expressing ourselves. It's not about the circumstance. It's about who I am as a person and who we are as a family. So that's what we want to take a real close look at here today as we find ourselves in these circumstances, not of our choosing and absolutely outside of our control. We just want to remind ourselves that we don't have to be out of control in ourselves as we react and respond in those circumstances. Well, really, everything is suddenly upside down. So just practically speaking, everything's different and difficult. And added to that, be, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, just because it's not what you're used to. And mm -hmm. so we all get to adjust. We're all going to have to grow together in this. And I had, I've had quite a few friends confide in me that she and her husband started, like, you know, they've been kind of bickering through this or just mm -hmm. having a hard time. Even what would normally be fine and normal has been heightened in this. I think for um, many not that people. The, not that the bickering is fine and normal. It's no. just that the circumstance under normal conditions would be wouldn't would, even br be bringing out that kind of a response. Right. And I uh, for women, I, now again, I talk mostly with the women, so that's why I know what, what we're thinking. If there's a fear factor, right? And when women are fearful, we can get kind of, we can get snippy, we can get, um, we can overreact. Um, I'm saying you out there, just kidding. <laughs> that would be me too. So I'm totally, when I say we, I literally mean we. So I know that that's another thing that can contribute to that. If um, many of you, you've, your husbands are not able to go into work anymore, so they're either working from home or unemployed, and that changes the dynamic, right? All the he's home and under your feet, and what that, we're in the way, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yeah. um, maybe the men aren't mindful of, you know, the the routine that goes on at home without them. Well, exactly. That is a challenge. You know, when a man comes in and all of a sudden he's part of something that he isn't normally part of. And the wife has got to figure out, well, hey, how does this all fit together? Listen, as much as you can, guys, just encourage the routines that are there to continue on as, as they were as much as you can. This is challenging circumstances for all of us, but that will help because routines do help in, in uh, challenging times like this. And it's really important for us individually, both the wife and the husband, to think, what am I bringing to the plate? What is my contribution to the culture of this home in this time? What am I actually contributing in terms of the tenor, the tone, the nature of the house, the culture of what's going on? What's my part? And there's a lot of things that we can do to make it a lot worse. And I think that when things go sideways, we can have some very typical reactions. And we just want to be mindful of those. And so here's just a couple of them to think about in terms of what are you doing? What's your contribution? And what's your part in everything that's going on in the home right now? Well, I think one of the ways we can make it worse is if we get overly rigid, maybe because we feel out of control or we feel afraid. And so we just start cracking down and, and either with our husband, our routines, um, our children even, mm -hmm. instead of realizing, you know what, this might be the time to be a little more flexible and to resist that impulse to... To yeah, be, you know, to so rigid. White knuckle the control. Yes. Yeah. Well, and I, I know that when I get stressed, my inclination is to communicate less. True story. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it doesn't fix things, just saying. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Okay. So that is something that happens a lot of times is we just pull in and we are communicating less and we, maybe we're thinking more and maybe mulling over a lot more, but just greatly reducing our communication and walking around with our head down and focused. And that's something that makes it worse. It doesn't make it better. 
I think uh, the other thing we can do is just get really sharp in our communication because we are feeling stressed, edgy. We just start, you know, venting our emotions and snapping at the other person, not because of that person, but just because of how we're feeling. Well, and that's just it, right? We look at the circumstances. We say it justifies me expressing myself in this way. And yeah, not good. That's how we make it worse. There's nothing positive that comes out of me communicating in a sharp, clipped way with Lisa. We can also just focus on ourselves and what we're dealing with and not being mindful of what the other person, what they're carrying or what's weighing on them. We're yeah. just kind of in on our own stuff. And really, where are our eyes? Where is our focus? Like our spiritual eyes is really what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Where are they in making these circumstances worse, right? They're really turned inward. They're turned on me in, in all of these things, right? If I'm thinking about Lisa and how my communication affects her, I'm not actually going to allow my flesh to control my communication with her. I'm not going to speak in that manner, right? Because my, my vision, my focus, my spiritual eyes are upon her. I'm not walking in the spirit. I'm walk, I, rather, I'm not walking in the flesh. I'm walking in the spirit. I'm thinking about the other person. I'm thinking about how I am called to communicate, to love, and uh, to interact with her. So all of these ways that we make it worse, it's the result of self-focus. And it's a result of literally turning our eyes inward instead of where they should be. Upward first and then outward to other people. Well, there are ways we can make it better, all right? And simple one uh, just to start off with is just chill. Choose to be flexible. Choose to just let go of the control and just realize, you know what? There's stuff going on that is outside of our control. And me grabbing it harder, me pushing it forward in a more ardent way, me just demanding that it be the way it's got to be, it's not going to fix anything. It's not going to help anything. Sometimes we just have to take a breath, be more flexible and recognize, you know what? I don't necessarily have to like what's happening, but I can relax Mm -hmm. in the circumstance. And it's a decision. And that's always something I had to remind myself that this is a decision I can decide to let this go. Yeah. And one of the things that I've, I need to do, I need to be mindful of just in my personality, I've got to talk. I've got to communicate. You know, Lisa might be over there with, uh, or maybe your wife is over there, with all of these concerns, these thoughts, maybe some fears. And me just being in my own little bubble, dealing with my challenges, the pressures, the bills I need to pay, and not communicating, bad deal. She needs me to communicate. And so, man, I am just super... And, You might have a wife who's a real communicator, so this isn't a one-size-fits-all thing. But in a lot of cases, the husband, you just got to reach out and communicate with your wife. Draw her out. Ask her how she's feeling. Talk about the circumstances. Bring it out into the open and just communicate about it. And it's amazing what talking about things can do to go a long way to diffuse tension and to diffuse that fear and And it even helps her know that you're thinking about these things. She understands where your mind's at. And it's a way that you can become just even in the midst of challenge. You can just enjoy that oneness, come together, and be on the same page together. Mm -hmm. And this is a real comfort to your wife. And so I just really want to encourage you, talk more, especially you guys. Yeah, I was going to say, even during these stressful times, it's all the more important to communicate more and deeper that you take that time to really express your concerns to ask your questions or just to to encourage one another instead of just carrying on doing the next thing yeah and the other thing you need to do keep the edge out of your communication it's just not okay stop cutting yourself slack in these things and it's just amazing how we allow ourselves this um, i'm going to say license with our significant other Sometimes we can talk in such a sharp way. We'd never do that over the fence to the neighbor, right? No matter how we're feeling about him or her. <laughs> so, right. so just recognize that's a kind of a, that, not kind of, I almost said kind of. It's not kind of a sinful way. It is a sinful way to communicate. It's a selfish way to communicate. And it's a destructive way to communicate. I think we forget that when we speak with an edge, when we have that clipped kind of sharp, a little edge to the, what we have to say. It's destructive. It tears down. And so... Let's not talk that way. And it isn't happening because of our circumstances. It isn't happening because something outside of me is making me do this. What does the Bible say? 
in Matthew 12, 34, it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. All right? So this stuff that's coming out of me and the way it's coming out, that's because of what's in there. So maybe God's asking us in this time of pressure where maybe I'm communicating this way. Maybe God's asking us, I want you to change that. I want you to recognize that way of communicating is sinful. And I, I want you to repent of that. And so if that's been a way of, uh, of communication, just repent of it. Go to your spouse. Tell him or her, I am sorry. Ask for forgiveness. And then stop doing it. It is a choice. It's not just happening to you. Another one of my favorite verses that I would teach our children just to make sure that that was part of their interaction, but it's also true for us as adults, and Absolutely. that is Proverbs sixteen twenty four: Pleasant words are like honeycomb, sweet mm-hmm. to the soul and health to the bones. Yeah. So just not underestimating the, the power of pleasant words, just saying something kind, saying something sweet, and watch what it does in your home and the atmosphere, just even in your relationship. Yeah. And then one last thing. It's just to appreciate what your spouse is carrying. Get your eyes off of all the stuff you're carrying. Recognize your spouse is carrying too. You see, you're doing this together. It isn't about just what you're doing, what you're dealing with. It isn't about the pressures you're feeling or the stress that you're uh, holding in. Your spouse is carrying things too. And so if your focus, if your eyes are off of yourself toward your spouse, being mindful that you're both in this together, you're both walking together, and you're one. This is God's perspective on who you are. You're one. So walk as one and just choose to appreciate each other. And it's such a powerful way to uh, bring a positive tone and a positive spirit into your home, into the moment. And it's amazing how those little moments string together to make up a day. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're really going to be turning that stressful time into an uplifting time. And you'd be, be surprised what a tremendous impact you have as an individual on your home when you're mindful of these things. Now, one of the things that I know that is a huge challenge in these times is you know, here we are. I mean, maybe we had our routines of things that we did as a family, things we did together, things we did as a spouse, uh, things we did with our kids. A lot of you have kids, right? And man, alive, sometimes you just run out of stuff to do. And that's why we've got an awesome resource we want to tell you about right now. And you should absolutely check it out. And it's by one of our amazing good friends. Yes, I'm so excited because Susan Alexander Yates has her new book out, Cousin Camp. And when I first heard about this concept, every summer, their entire family, all the grandkids and grandkids all get together for a whole week of just activities and faith building and fun. And I asked her, okay, tell me about that. Like, how did that come about? And how did you do that? And why did you do that? And I loved hearing about it. It was very inspiring. And now she has all of those answers and more in this new book, Cousin Camp. And you don't have to wait until the summer to even start this. It's it's a great book to pick up now and start brainstorming. Okay, how could, how would that look like in our family? What are some things we can do even now that will start building those kinds of relationships and faithfulness that goes on from generation to generation? Absolutely. And you don't have to wait till the kids have cousins. I mean, this is something that you can get. It's got it's filled with all kinds of ideas and activities to do with kids. And so if you're looking for a resource for even what to do with your family, mm-hmm. get a copy of Cousins Camp by Susan Yates because it's got a ton. I mean, it is about building family relationships yes. over the long haul within yep. your family. I mean, that, that part of it is really the core of the book. But the fact is, is it's got a ton of activities to do for families. Yeah. And so if you're looking for things to do, it's an awesome resource. All right. So anyway, we just wanted to mention that. It's Cousins Camp by Susan Yates. It's, she's just a lovely friend. She writes for Club 31 Women. Yes. And uh, just a godly, wonderful lady. And we love them so much, John and Susan Yates. But anyway, uh, that is uh, something we wanted to mention to you. But anyway, uh, just... Let, let's just uh, just dive back in to a little bit because before we talked about our expectations, uh, just and how when those get change, how they get challenged, what what it does to us. You know, we we thought it was going to be a certain way, and then it's not that way. And it's funny. I often tell people that uh, before I'm ta- having a conversation with a friend who's in business, I say the most important thing you're ever going to do in business is to manage expectations. And it's funny how it's easy to say that about somebody else's circumstances, right? But then when we are in the circumstances, you know what? One of the most important things we can do is manage our own expectations. 
And the thing is, is we get this idea as Christians in North America, you know, life is just supposed to be a certain way. All right. It's, hey, there's a thing here and a thing there that we wouldn't choose that isn't the best. But overall, we kind of have this idea that it just needs to get bigger and better and more wonderful as we go along. It's this sort of materialistic North American religion expectation about how life is supposed to be better and better and better because, hey, come to God, and it's all about him showering blessings on me. Yeah, I deal with the hardship here and there, but it's just basically supposed to be better. But see, that expectation is a tremendous distraction to the life that God called us to live. Well, that message is everywhere, so you can absorb it without even being aware of oh, it. Oh, that's so true. That's part of it. And, yeah. and uh, truth be told, I... When this all started coming down and there were disappointments everywhere and plans canceled and events canceled, oh, yeah. I uh, was really convicted that there were several things, several ways that I had bought into some of that, that I did put my hopes into something other than Jesus Christ because when those plans were canceled, there's some natural disappointment. So I think that's, I think that's fine and well, but... But I would say for myself that it was it was very convicting that I thought, okay, I actually was putting my hope there. Hmm. And I was not really receiving what the Lord had for me in this other thing. So um, maybe you find yourself in that same place where you go, okay, I, I had expected things to get better. I had expected this to go through and instead of holding it loosely as God asks us to do. Well, you know, hard times are not fun. <laughs> I mean, yeah. th- there's no putting a happy face on difficult things and hard times. And we just heard of a friend whose uh, husband is in uh, ICU mm-hmm. with COVID-19. He's, is he, how old is he? Uh, you know, she didn't say, but, okay, right? but it wasn't looking good. And it's not looking good. All right. Hard times are not fun. But the thing about hard times, the truth is, never mind our expectations, the truth about hard times is that they're normal. And we, as believers, we've just got to reorient our thinking that hard times aren't some weird intrusion into the wonderful life that God intended for me to have. Hard times are normal. But you know, friends, pressure, difficulties, challenges, the end result of it doesn't have to be bad. Mm-hmm. You know, you think of the diamond, you can't make a diamond without pressure, right? Huh. And this is really what God is up to. He's refining us. You see, dealing with our experience and the, and, and the actual um, experience that we have within those circumstances, it's really about our perspective on our circumstances and our posture before God in our circumstances. And I just want to ask everybody listening, do you have the perspective that God is refining you in the difficult times? Just like that diamond that was the result of tremendous pressure? Are you willing to receive the challenges that are incoming, the pressures that are incoming, and allow God in the midst of that pressure to refine you? Because that's really what God's heart is for the believer. And there's, frankly, some great news in this reality. And remember our perspective, right? How, How our expectations matter so much. Jesus told us the way it's going to be. Jesus said in John 16, 33, he said, In this world, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. Now, don't you just love that? In the midst of saying, in this world, you will have trouble. So which is what he's saying is, in the midst of your trouble, be of good cheer. Hmm. In this world, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. All of the challenges, all of the pressures, all of the stresses, the financial things bearing down on you, the medical challenges you didn't want, all of it, Jesus says, I have overcome this world. Hmm, That's encouraging. That is an awesome promise to Mm -hmm. hang on to in troubled times. Mm -hmm. Allow God to do his refining work in you in the pressure of circumstances you would never choose for yourself, but circumstances that God has called you to walk triumphantly through. So friends, what's happening in your home? Is your routine just 
shot, everything's all upside down? Are you trying to find new ways of walking together and making the most of this time? I was just talking to actually another mom friend of mine, and we're talking about how a mom can use this time to create memories with their children, with their families, because they're going to look back. This is an historic time, and they're going to look back and remember that. Well, I think a lot of dads out there right now. Hmm. And I want to ask you, are you leading your family? Are you leading your family spiritually? Are you leading your family in family devotions? I think for a lot of dads, that's kind of an intimidating concept. Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm going to lead them in family devotions. They feel like they have to commit an act of seminary um, <laughs> right. yeah, yes. level it can be intimidating. Uh, theology. No, open the Bible and read it to your kids. And by the way, if you've got young kids, hey, the book of Joshua is a great place to start. It's fascinating. I mean, just as one example, there's all kinds of wonderful places in the Bible that you can just open up and begin to read and talk about. You don't have to commit an act of theology. Just talk about God. Talk about what he's doing. Read the word and share it with your kids. You can just do that. It's a simple thing to do. Just And maybe God's just offered you this time at home to recalibrate how you're leading your family. Let God be at work and let him use you to disciple your kids to know and love him. It's just one thing that you can do. In, uh, and that's why we ask you what's happening in your home. Because your home isn't just this thing that's existing outside of God's plan and purposes. Children are what God is doing in the world. We often say that. And God has given you, just read Deuteronomy 6, God has given you the responsibility to impart the knowledge of him to your family. And this is a great time to get started on a routine when all the routines are out the window. Yeah, I had several moms write me recently saying that their families were going to start uh, coffee time like we have before we have our Bible time. And mm-hmm. because the children weren't having to run off to school and just things were a little bit slower in the mornings, they were able to do that. So I was encouraged to hear that, that people were turning this hard thing into an, actually an opportunity to uh, to slow down and, and do the things that they've been wanting to do. Absolutely. Hey, everybody. Before we bust out of here, I just want to remind you of the Freedom Course. I want to remind you that it is closing. The April class enrollment is closing in just a few days. We're going to get started April 2nd on Thursday. And I want to invite you to go to faithfulman.com forward slash freedom. That's faithfulman.com forward slash freedom. If you're ready to walk in victory, if you're ready to walk in the power and in the triumph that God won for you at the cross of Jesus Christ, then come and join me for this live class. It's going to be an awesome time. Faithfulman.com forward slash freedom. Let's learn how to walk as faithful men. So don't let these circumstances bear down on you and get you to turn against each other, right? As husband and wife, as mom and dad. Mm -hmm. Let these circumstances cause you to turn toward each other, to turn your hearts toward each other. And so let's be purposeful about what we're doing to keep our focus where it needs to be. Satan has a use of all of these circumstances in all of his wicked, devious, destructive ways. God has a use of them too. And God is just saying, let me be at work in the midst of these circumstances because I've got lots of wonderful things to do in terms of refining you, in terms of growing you, sanctifying you, God will use all of these things. Remember uh, what um, I think it was that Joseph said that you know, in, uh, upon uh, meeting his brothers and, and actually um, revealing who he was to them. Yep. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And that's what God's going to do out of this. He's going to bring his good. His purposes are going to go forward, and God just calls us as his people to be obedient to him, and to uh, be a positive part of what he's doing in the world. And so don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. God has the future in the palm of his hand. He's got your future Hmm. in the palm of his hand. So remind yourself that you are the child of an awesome God. And remind yourself of a few other things too. Remind yourself you're in this together. You're not walking through this separately. You're together. Remind yourself that 
this is what God has given us to walk through. He's got this. Remind yourself that you have an enemy. But what your enemy meant for evil, God will use for good in your life, your marriage, your home, your family, if you will let him. So friends, let's turn our eyes toward God. Let's get our vision where it needs to be. When we're right with God, we're going to be right with each other. Mm -hmm. When we walk in the light as he is in the light, the Bible says we have fellowship with one another. Mm -hmm. And that's what God wants, even if we're kind of bumping shoulders in a way that we weren't as much (laughs) a few weeks ago. But anyway, hey, listen, we hope that you have a good week this coming week, and we just hope your eyes are on the King of Kings, and we hope that you have confidence in the God who loves you, the God who sees you, the God who knows you. So it's fantastic to be with you today. God bless you. Our God is our rock and our redeemer. He already knows what your week holds. He knows exactly what you're facing. He loves you and is for you. So this week, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you.